What's going on guys? The festive season's already around the corner with Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, so I thought I'd make a dessert or a snack which suits that so well or really any day of the year. This one's gonna be a caramel slice, which is also known as millionaire's shortbread. It tastes fantastic, it's super easy to make, and all of the ingredients are easily accessible. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right guys, let's start us off by creating our delicate base. So add 140 grams or 4.9 ounces of plain all-purpose flour to a mixing bowl, along with 45 grams or 1.6 ounces of desiccated coconut, 65 grams or 2.3 ounces of brown sugar, 125 grams or 4.4 ounces of melted unsalted butter, and a small pinch of sea salt flakes. Grab a spatula or a wooden spoon and mix this all together until it forms a soft pastry consistency. The flour provides structure, the desiccated coconut adds a subtle pop of flavour and texture, the brown sugar adds sweetness and a deep molasses flavour, the butter helps it all bind together, and the sprinkle of sea salt flakes enhances the other ingredients and will make our mouths water with every bite. Once that's done, transfer the mix to a 28cm by 18cm baking pan that's lined with parchment paper, and use the back of a spoon to spread and level this out, trying your best to get it as smooth and consistent as possible, which will help with even layers that we will make in the next step. This can then be placed into a preheated oven set at 160 degrees Celsius or 320 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 14 to 15 minutes or until golden on top. We can then carefully remove it and allow it to cool down and slightly set for 20 minutes. In the meantime, place a small saucepan onto your stovetop and add in 125 grams or 4.4 ounces of cubed unsalted butter, 65 grams or 2.3 ounces of brown sugar, 395 grams or 13.9 ounces of sweetened condensed milk, and finally one teaspoon or five milliliters of vanilla bean paste or extract. Place this over a medium low heat, and this part is the most tedious part of this recipe due to the fact that we now have to continuously stir this for four minutes. During this time, the butter will melt and blend into the other ingredients, which will allow them to become friends, and the condensed milk will start to reduce and will create the caramel flavor we're looking for. As for a bit of guidance, once you start to see bubbles appearing on the surface, it's getting pretty close to being done, and once it only just starts to simmer around the edges, our job is complete and we can then remove it from the stovetop. This can then be poured over the cooled base, making sure to scrape it all out to avoid any wastage, then using the spatula, spread it out evenly, covering all corners of the base, and gravity will take its toll on this and make it even due to its mass weight. Once done, take this back over to the oven that's now at 140 degrees Celsius or 280 degrees Fahrenheit, and bake for 12 minutes or until golden and bubbly on top, rotating it halfway through. Once bubbling, like you can see here, this can then be removed, let it cool for 15 minutes, then place it in the fridge for half an hour. Once the caramel's set, place a small saucepan onto your stovetop and add in 200 grams or 7.05 ounces of good quality dark chocolate chips or pieces, along with one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of sunflower oil. Place it over a low heat and gently stir until melted and smooth, and I know you might be thinking, why oil in chocolate? And to answer that, this will allow the chocolate to be soft even when it's set and prevent it from cracking like glass when we finally slice it up. As this is now melted and smooth and looking extra delicious, this can then be removed from the stovetop and immediately pour it over the set caramel, making sure to get it all in there. Spread the chocolate out with the back of a spoon, making sure to completely cover everything, and you can also give this a few gentle bangs on the bench to make sure there's no air pockets. Once spread, hit it up with a good sprinkle of sea salt flakes, which really enhances the overall flavor, then place it in the fridge for one to one and a half hours or overnight to set. Okay, this has now been an hour and a half and is fully set. We can carefully remove it from the baking pan, ensuring you don't snap it in half, and gently peel off the parchment paper. Next, run a knife under hot water, then dry it off, which will make it easier and cleaner to slice. And I'm first slicing it in half to then slice each half into quarters, but please feel free to slice it smaller if you prefer, or leave it whole and just have it as a single piece. Now with each quarter, I'm slicing them into thirds, making sure the sizes are as consistent as possible, and once that's done, we're then left with these absolute beauties that have three even layers which will provide different textures and flavours. If you were to serve these up, you can do it however you'd like, and I like to create a nice little tower, and of course, garnish with a caramel slice, which then leads us to the last step, which is that we can then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here serves 12 to 24 pieces, depending on which size you cut it. And like most of my recipes, it can easily be double, tripled, and so on, or halved if you wanted to make less. To store these, you can place them in the fridge for up to two weeks or in an airtight container for up to two weeks, but I do recommend putting it in the fridge. It just stays firm and more solid and easier to eat that way. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, comment, share, do all of that stuff. It really does help my channel out and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and enjoy.